Um, it's the first chance we've got to really speak to you after that memorable moment yeah. at the weekend. Um, first question has to be, what are the feelings at the moment you scored? Because um, it wasn't just a tap in, was it? No, I mean it was. It was special, I have to say. I, it's hard. You, you sort of emotions are a bit up, up in the yeah. air at the time you're scoring, which is great, obviously, because he's putting us one 0 up. So that, I suppose that's the, the first emotion. Is brilliant. Mm. We're, we're one 0 up. The goal obviously was, was special at the time for myself. Uh, actually, just to strike alone, and then you start to as I was jogging off, obviously I had my, my vest ready, and it was a case of then I realised what I'd achieved, I suppose, mm. and I didn't want the achievement to be more than what the result was going to be. You know, obviously yeah. that's a personal thing for me, but the, the main thing on the day was to win the game, and um, you know I said after the game I'd have been gutted if I'd have scored and we'd have lost, or you know, mm. which, which wasn't what I was about. So it was nice that we won as well, and it all sort of uh, merged together, but. Once I'd done it, it was, a, it was a proud moment, but it was a case of, I suppose, once I got my shirt back over my head and got yeah. booked, it was a case of get on with it and, you know, that's done and, you know, hopefully try and get another one and, and, and win the game. Is that a goal that, that now, when you when you look back, and we were talking about going to get an by ITV last night, mm. when you look back on all your goals, and is that going to be a goal that you sort of look back on maybe when you retire and think that was a landmark moment for yeah you. definitely I think that there's, there'll be moments throughout once I go back on a, on a more like my first ever goal um, I've had goals as clinch promotions um, 200 goal yeah. obviously 100 150 so there'll be there'll be moments throughout it that I'll go look back on and think you know that's it but I think 250 is is huge you know I, I tried to have a look yesterday someone sort of mentioned oh, there can't be too many mm. players like in history and yeah so when you think about it, it probably isn't. Mm. You know, even if it's fifty players, it's you know when you think how many people have played football, it's, it's quite a small amount. Yeah. So if I'm in that sort of band, it, it does bring it home. I didn't probably think how big it was going to be until after the game when the coverage was, yeah. was real big. Um, building up to it, I knew it was a big achievement, but mm. I just thought for me it was a big achievement. But it seemed obviously on a, on a wider scale it was it was you know talked about a lot so it probably hit home more after the game and Sunday when I sort of then sunk in and I realised mm. you know it's 250 goals which some people don't even play that many games I suppose so yeah it's, it's been a big thing and I'm, I'm really proud of it but it is one of them where while you're still playing you have to get on yeah. with it and Saturday comes and it's forgotten and it's on to the next and you know hopefully I can score many more and, and, and be talking about it but about them and the 250, obviously, it'd be a case of when I retire, it'd be something I look back on, and you know, it'd be you know a real special moment. It didn't obviously, I, I work with you on, on on your profile and your media stuff, and mm. the national recognition for it has been huge. And mm. you know, even fellow professionals, I saw Billy Sharp sort of tweeted about you the other day, saying what you know what an achievement was. And I understand uh, a certain person left a voicemail for you. Yeah, you? yeah, John Watson um, rang up, uh, had a message today. I yeah. I, I met him. When I was real young, um, I'd won the Golden Boot at Bristol Rovers and we went to a 4 4 2 awards. Mm. Um, we were sat around, I think Angus Deacon was on the table, and it was quite a you know, big thing, I suppose. Um, John was there, he'd won awards, and we met, had a good chat. Um, haven't really come across since then, mm. but he'd rang up the club and left a long message to, yeah. to wish me all the best. And I suppose for me, I'm not on Twitter and things like that, so I don't yeah, see yeah. what goes on. So obviously, now you're saying that fellow professionals are saying congratulations I, I mean through Instagram I've had a load of messages from mm. fellow professionals and friends and stuff and yeah I suppose I didn't like say in the build up to it didn't realise how big a deal it was going to be in, in, until I've done it and then I've actually thought about it a bit more and, and researched it and yeah I suppose it's, it's, it's a bit of an achievement <laughs> and it's the way that it was almost like a not in a nasty sense, but in a way, it was a pure arrogance that that strike. It was like no one should take a shot from no. there, especially if they're two hundred and fiftieth career goal. <laughs> yeah. So, um, I mean, for any kids watching, there's a lot of young fans at Chance mm. Town who watch you play and, and your movement. You know, not just your finishing, your movement, uh, the way you work with the other members of the squad. What kind of advice would you give to them to sort of like help there? Um, I don't know. I, I, I say enjoy it as much as you can. You know, I think it's hard once you you go from being a kid and. You, all you do is play for the love of football and mm. you have to try and keep that. Obviously, you go into a, a professional, you're earning money and you know, have to make a living and stuff, but I think I've always tried to to, to play and, and be the sort of person I was when I was a kid. Yeah. Um, even around friends, I, I don't walk around you know, like I'm a big superstar. Mm. I, I try and be as normal as possible and I think from doing that, it's kept me grounded um, and I've just loved football. Um, 
you have to work hard and uh, take advice mm. that's and you know listen to people the older people and experienced people they do know mm. better uh, you know I, I'm one now that's come from being a kid to being an experienced player I know what I was told back then I didn't listen to and I'm telling the younger players what I was being told and mm. when you are young especially I know what I was like I thought I knew everything thought I was the best player in the world and yeah. I played in the Premier League and played for England and any advice uh, no I'm, I know what I'm doing and mm. You do learn eventually as you get older, and if you can, the earlier you can grasp that, I think the better career you'll have. And I probably didn't grasp it as early as I should have done, but I say it's part of life. Is that's you know, this is where I am because of you know what I've been, and that would be advice. Take it from people. Like I say, I'm trying to help as many people mm. as I can now because I've been through it, yeah. and I hope that people respect that and think, yeah, well, Jamie's played 700 games and done this. He's played at every level. Yeah, yeah. Surely he must know what he's talking about. And I think it is hard for kids because you do think you know it all. That's just part of life. And yeah. it's the ones that, that, that take hold of that advice early and then become a bit better. So that's the sort of major thing I'd say. And, and just work hard. Look after yourself. This is another big thing. You know, don't think you're going to miss out on things. Like I always did. I always thought if it's a night out, friends mm -hmm. are asking you. You think, oh, they'll, they'll be there when you're 30. They'll be there when you're 40. You know, nothing really changes. Yeah, yeah. Enjoy your football and, and, and do as much as you can and achieve as much as you can in football because... It does end, and you know, my dad always said, look, before you know it, you'll be 30, 35, and I was like 20, thinking I'll be all right, and luckily I'm 38 still playing, but yeah, yeah. a lot of my friends have had to retire through injury or just through not being able to do it, and you know, it's the worst thing that they've ever had to do, so enjoy the time you're in it and, and try and achieve as much as possible, um, and that's what I'd say, and for me on a personal level, I, goals in my life, I've scored goals from a kid, I used to you know, play Wembley, I would always be goal hanger, and I've just enjoyed doing it and yeah. even t today the goals I score in the training ground I mean is you know I love it and yeah, yeah. I think that's why I've always scored because I just have a passion for scoring goals and enjoying football. Now I know having said that you're not planning to slow down you're planning mm. to play a, as long as you as you possibly can which is which, you know it's absolutely fantastic mm. and I suppose you never make targets but in terms of you know where you, you know when you look past your career is, is do you still want to stay in football or would that be it? No, no, I, I can't do nothing else. Mm. Um, from the age of seven, I've kicked a ball around. Mm. Um, school, again, because I knew I could play, knew I was going to be a footballer. I didn't really attend school. I was quite a bad kid. Mm. Um, so anything like that has gone out the window my whole life. I would imagine from then until the time I literally can't really walk, yeah. I'd probably be football. So um, people have moaned at me a lot because I'm, uh, you know, I, I do things later than I probably should. Yeah, I don't. Yeah get on top of things and my badges everyone's moaned at me about. I like media. I've mm. always enjoyed going to games, talking radio, TV. That's sort of something I probably in my head have wanted to do um, from from a while. Uh, so I've tried to get into that as much as possible. But I will do my badges because mm. I feel that I've got something to offer. And when I am out there, I do really enjoy it. If I'm giving advice, if I'm helping in a session, I do enjoy doing mm. it. And I think, you know, I've got a lot to give back. So... It will be football, definitely. Um, what direction it takes me, I don't know. I'm going to try and, like I say, do as much as possible. Mm -hmm. um, but it will be probably those two fields. You know, I feel I can spot players and put teams together. So management-wise, yeah, why not? I mean, um, it will be football, like I say. And yeah. I'm one of those sort of angles. If not, you know, I'll try more. But, um, yeah, I like to give something back because it's given me a lot. And, um, like I say, it's all I know. So... <laughs> Um, I'm sure I'll be still doing the similar sort of stuff and going to games and yeah. coaching or, or media for, for a good few more years.